My name is Catherine Arnston and I'm the founder and CEO of Energy Bits. We're eight years old and we're based in Boston. And I started the company as a result of my younger sister having breast cancer and her oncologist told her she needed to eat an alkaline diet because it would help her heal and I helped her figure that out. And then I discovered algae is the most alkaline food in the world and I decided we needed to help other people be healthy with, with algae. Um, it's a little tough to talk while everybody's clearing out of the room, so I might just wait a second or two. Uh, but it, the, the speaker prior to me was a great segue <clears throat> to why you should think about adding algae to your diet, because um, it is ketogenic and does not increase your glucose or decrease your ketones. And it satisfies your hunger and does not interfere with any fasting. So when you have algae, you are still in your intermittent fasted state, uh, but you're not hungry and you're not tired. And there's only one calorie. So it's, it's fantastic for those purposes. Um, and also it gives you all the nutrients and minerals that, uh, and chlorophyll that a ketogenic diet won't be able to provide you if you aren't eating a lot of greens. And a lot of people don't like to eat greens. So, um, because of the carbs. So anyways, we've got a small group. Um, buckle in because I'm gonna share eight years of research in 45 minutes and um, we'll see how it goes. So basically, you can improve any of your um, w health with algae, whether you're on a ketogenic diet or not. And so I've broken the presentation into three sections. Basically, I wanna inform you what algae is, what are some of the healing attributes uh, of algae, including ketogenic, and some of the, just a handful of diseases that algae helps prevent, and it's all science-based. So as we go through the presentation, I'll get into more and more detail, but we're gonna start at a, at a pretty high level. But what is algae? Well, it's a food. A lot of people think that it's a supplement, but it's not. It's a crop that's grown just like broccoli or kale, but it has extraordinary health benefits that can't be uh, matched by anything else. And all of these uh, qualifiers and all the statements I give you are evidence-based. Uh, here's something from PubMed. Spirulina is one of the most important therapeutic foods. Um, again, I'm not the only one that's saying that algae is so remarkable. The Journal of Medicine Foods says it's the optimal, provides the optimal health for humans because of the different bioactive compounds. Even the United Nations and NASA endorse algae. United Nations had a global conference in the 70s endorsing algae as the uh, answer to world hunger, and NASA says it has a thousand times more nutrients than any other fruits or vegetables. That's, that's a pretty big number. Uh, in fact, we, um, we do sell it in large bags, and we figure one bag of our algae tablets has th uh, three grocery carts full of, um, or 30 rather, of, of food. So, like I said, algae is not a supplement, it's, a, it's food. And it's the oldest plant form on life. It was uh, the first plant life on Earth three, four billion years ago. Uh, and, it, and I can't reemphasize enough that it's not a supplement. And, and just to prove that it's not a supplement, a couple months ago, Congress introduced the first Al Algae Agricultural Act to encourage farmers in America to grow algae because almost all the algae is grown in Asia and they realize it's the most nutrient-dense food in the world, a sustainable crop. And you know what? You can't grow supplements. <laughs> you can only grow crops. So that right there pr proves that algae is a crop. It's also the most documented food in the world. There's 100,000 studies documenting the benefits of algae. It offers the most health benefits of algae. It gives you the most vitamins and minerals. And it's most sustainable. You get about 100 times more protein per acre uh, from growing algae than you do from uh, animal crops. But the problem with algae is it's either misunderstood in America or it's unknown. Why? Because this is how it's been sold in America or Canada for the last 50 years. Uh, uh, it's weird packaging. It doesn't explain any of the benefits. Uh, the quality has also been questionable. A lot of the algae came from China where they use um, poor crops. They use a lot of heat to flash uh, dry it, which kills all the enzymes and moves the nutrients around. Um, so, and there's been no consumer education or practitioner education on algae. So that's what we've been trying to do is address all of these issues with my company. Wellness, algae is wellness. Wellness is algae. You get the most protein, it has three times more protein than steak. It has 48 times more 
um, spinach, uh, iron than spinach. It has the highest concentration of chlorophyll in the world, a thousand times more than greens, a thousand times more antioxidants than, in, than you find in cherries. Um, it's loaded with uh, essential fatty acids, whether it's omega-3, DHL, GLA, and most importantly, I've, I've discovered, because I've learned a lot about K2, and I, I will talk about this book that you should all read. It's called Vitamin K2 and the Calcium Paradox. Um, they're finding that K, the, K, the shortage of K2 in our diets is one of the main contributors to heart disease, Alzheimer's, and osteoporosis. And guess what? K2 is found in the algae, particularly the chlorella. But, and the only other place you can find K2 is in grass-fed dairy or beef. Algae is keto, it's vegan, it's gluten-free, it's organic, uh, there's no sugar, uh, it's used by the diabetic community, the cancer community, that's increasingly being used now by the heart disease community. Um, yeah, there's so many nutrients in algae, this is just a, a chart, I can hand out um, copies of these, I know it's a little hard to read. But the important thing is to know that it's, it's so loaded with, with nutrients, particularly minerals. And you know, when you're on the keto diet, you can very often be short of your minerals and you're definitely short of chlorophyll. So um, these um, two algae, spirulina and chlorella, uh, will meet all of those dietary absences. Um, but they're quite different. There's actually about 15 to 20,000 strains of algae in the world, uh, and there's really almost only these two that won't kill you. <laughs> um, so let me give you a little history of, of, uh, of these two in particular. So spirulina was the first plant life on Earth uh, almost four billion years ago, and then chlorella developed about a billion years later. Um, in my slides, you're gonna find out about spirulina as actually a bacteria. Chlorella does belong to the plant kingdom, but it's actually technically a sea vegetable because it does not have any of the anti-nutrients or phytic, um, phytic acid that you find in plants. So it doesn't have any of the downside of a plant-based diet. And just to put that in con context, like I said, those are three and four billion years ago. Humans only showed up seven million years ago. So they've been around a lot longer than we have, and they're still here. So as I said, spirulina is a, is a bacteria. It's called a cyanobacteria. Um, and uh, it's a blue-green algae, and the blue is, the, um, is a pigment called phycocyanin. But the remarkable thing about spirulina is because it's a bacteria, there is no cellulose wall. This is one of the reasons why it gets into your bloodstream so quickly. When we started, our first set of customers were endurance athletes. These were long-distance runners, triathletes, um, ultra-runners, and they loved the, the spirulina because it gets into their body very quickly and it's a steady energy both mentally and physically and it did not upset their stomach like all those carb-based products do because it's impossible when you're active and you're trying to digest sugar uh, it's it, you know messy pants is what everybody talks about so spirulina doesn't have any of those problems and it's it, as I said it's the highest concentration loaded with fatty acids all the B vitamins, which is one of the reasons why you get so much energy, and superoxide dismutase, is, it's one of the few sources of exogenous sources of, uh, of this, which is a very um, potent antioxidant. And studies have been showing that it improves your ATP production, which is, of course, where everything happens. So here's a picture of the, of the spirulina, um, and, and basically what it does, it improves the methylation thanks to the B vitamins, it improves all your brain and um, uh, functioning. We have uh, truck drivers who use it, we have surgeons who use it, students, because it's not just the physical energy that you get from it, it's the mental energy, it's the focus. Um, and it's fantastic for balancing blood sugar, whether you're diabetic or just plain hungry. And spirulina grows in a spiral, which is why it's called spirulina, you can see that picture. Um, and we say that, you know, we recommend it as a food-based replacement for your vitamins, because, you know, the, the RDAs for those vitamins are so high because your body only absorbs about 5% of them. 95% of vitamins are made from artificial ingredients that your body can't recognize. It recognizes everything in the algae because it's food. It comes from nature. So spirulina differs from chlorella. Chlorella is technically a plant. And in fact, not only does it have a cellulose wall, it has the hardest cellulose wall in the plant kingdom. That's very important because that's one of the reasons why chlorella has been used for 50 years to pull out toxins. It pulls out mercury, lead, lactic acid, alcohol, anything that shouldn't be there. It also has the highest concentration of RNA and DNA in the world, and this is really important because particularly as you age, your RNA and DNA get damaged, and so your cells grow 
back in a damaged fashion, but uh, this helps you um, revive that. And it has this weird thing they call the chlorella growth factor. Chlorella is the fastest growing plant form on earth. And you may have heard a lot of work being done in biofuel, and biofuel was always being used with chlorella because they were trying to tap the energy when the chlorella kept um, reproducing. But the reason I'm telling you that is because it also helps your cells reproduce. So it, it, um, when you injure yourself or have surgery, you heal in, in literally half the time. And, and as I said, this is all, all evidence-based. So the benefits of chlorella because of that hard cellular wall that attaches to toxins is it pulls out toxins. It also has the highest concentration of chlorophyll. And that's how I got into this because uh, my sister's doctor told her she needed plants because of the chlorophyll, which builds your immune system. And if you're following a keto diet, there's probably very few vegetables, green vegetables in your diet, and this is a very easy way for you to beef up your, your chl um, chlorophyll needs. It just, you can either swallow them or chew them. So it, it, it can be a replacement for greens, and I don't know too many men or too many kids that li like greens, so if you have any of those folks in your life, you know, just feed them some chlorella and they've, they've, they've got their, uh, chlorella, their chlorophyll needs met. I have these two pictures, I just did this at home, and you're welcome to do this as well. Um, the spirulina, uh, the, as I mentioned, it has a blue pigment called phycocyanin, and, and I, I, for years I used to look at it, I put these, in, these little tablets in these dishes, and the blue would disperse beautifully, and it's like, why are you doing that? Because the chlorella, as you can see, clumps. And then I finally realized it's because the blue pigment is water-based, and the reason why that's important is because scientists have found that this this phycocyanin has anti-cancer properties. It has, it's called anti-angiogenesis. It stops the growth of blood vessels to tumors or cancers. And it made sense to me because now I understand because this goes into your blood vessels and your plasma, and that's where all the, all the magic happens compared to chlorella, which is fat-based, so it doesn't disperse through your body or through the water very well because it's fat. But this, this is why it heals your cell walls, because your cell walls are fat-based, and you have to have healthy fats so that nutrients can get in and toxins can get out. And they've used chlorella for decades for healing IBS and Crohn's disease, and I used to wonder, why, why is it doing that? So I realized that cl uh, chlorophyll, only 5 or 10% of it gets absorbed in your stomach, and the rest of it stays through your liver and all through your digestive tract, and while it's doing that, it's absorbing all the can uh, carcinogens, and it's healing the cell walls in your, in your gut, and that's why it helps with IBS and Crohn's disease. So they are quite different, and they, they respond differently in your body. And they also grow differently. So uh, the spirulina, which grows like in a spiral, it has long, narrow um, farms. This is, these are a couple of shots of farms in Asia. And chlorella, which grows round, has to be grown in round ponds. But th these aren't little things that your kids do on the, you know, for a science project at school. Th this is the agricultural cr uh, growing of algae is a huge industry in Asia. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. It's almost as big as the beef industry is here. And I tell you that because um, it's going to start, you're going to start seeing algae in America and Canada um, in, a, in a much bigger way. And it's, and it's because you can't keep something this nutrient dense out of the mainstream much longer, but it's a very sophisticated crop um, to grow. So why do you need it? Well, because everything else around you is full of sugar chemicals and, and stimulants, and everyone's sick. Uh, all of this has led to a health crisis. It's, it's unbelievable, but it is preventable with proper nutrition and lifestyle. The toxins can be pulled out by the chlorella. There's no minerals in the soil, so even if you eat greens, you're not getting anything. The algae is loaded with minerals. The lack of K2 is causing all those heart disease and osteoporosis and Alzheimer's. It's in the, it's in the algae, particularly the chlorella. You take fish oil for your omega-3. Well, guess what? Almost all fish oil goes rancid immediately, and there's studies that prove this. So you're taking something to reduce inflammation and it's causing inflammation. Guess where the fish get their omega-3 from? The algae. So why not go to the original source? It never goes rancid, it never goes bad, and it's also vegan and it's, it's stable. It, it, you could have it for 10 years and it would still be as healthy. And it's natural. All those vitamins you're taking, 95% of them are synthetic and you can't even absorb them and they're not doing much. So all of these things that are happening with the, the, the disease, the diabetes, the, the heart disease can be cured or certainly aided by algae. 
Uh, and it's, it's, it's so rampant that we almost think it's normal when people have cancer now, it's, it's so sad. So why is algae the answer? Well, it oxygenates your cells, with, and your cells in your mitochondria where all the action is, and that's where all the disease starts. If the, if the mitochondria in your cells don't get proper oxygen, they can't communicate. So, and when they can't communicate, then they become rogue cells and develop into, cell, into cancer cells, and that's where all these things happen. If, as long as you can get oxygen to, and, and nutrients to your mitochondria, you're in a much better shape. Uh, you get all the B vitamins for the, the methylation. Um, this is a, from spirulina. Uh, so it improve, you get all the electrolytes that you need. It slows the aging because of all your antioxidants. You get all that, you don't, you're not very hungry because you've got all that protein, uh, which also doesn't decrease your ketones. And so uh, between that and the chlorella, which is very high in chlorophyll, very high in RNA and DNA, very high in K2, um, uh, and it pulls all those toxins, and we are surrounded by toxins. 75,000 chemicals have been released into our environment since World War II, and it's cumulative. When they do studies now, they, they isolate a pesticide or a chemical, but nothing exists in isolation. We have, it's, we have layers of chemicals, and so that's why so many people are sick, because we, we're just surrounded by fumes in, in, in our bodies, in our, in our environments, in our cars. You've got to get those toxins out, and chlorella is a cheap later and has been used for radiation. They used it at Fukushima, they used it at Chernobyl, they used it at, at Hiroshima. Uh, they use it for people getting chemotherapy and they put, pulls out the extra chemo so they're not as sick. So this stuff has been used for forever. Here's just one testimonial, we get them every day. There's a young lady, she's 35 years old, she has three children and she has cancer, she, had can she still has cancer. But she wrote us and said, she had been, you know, bedridden because uh, for months at a time because she just had no energy. She, her hair fell out. She lost 80 pounds. Um, she tried every medical doctor, every treatment. She tried every supplement. And a friend of hers sent her a couple of bags of uh, the spirulina and chlorella. And within two weeks, she was up and walking around. And she's doing even better now. So I just you know, let you share that with you. I know it's a little tough to read, but um, this stuff works, and, and it's just from Mother Nature, and it's um, pure. As long as you get it from a good source, like, you know, we, obviously us, um, it, 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 it's so beneficial, I can't begin to tell you. And it doesn't matter how old you are. You could be a newborn. In Japan, if babies can't digest mother's milk, the only thing that keeps them alive is spirulina in water. And I wondered about that for years, too, until I found an old study that showed what the, um, oops, uh, what the profile of mother's breast milk was, and I thought, gosh, that looks awfully familiar. And sure enough, even on an amino acid basis, it was almost identical to spirulina. And it has, the, you know, the only place that has more GLA, gamma-linic acid, than spirulina is mother's breast milk. And the reason why there's so much of it, because the baby needs all that healthy fat to help build their brain. Their brain doubles or triples in size after birth. So algae is, is quite remarkable, very uh, misunderstood or just not known. Um, um, but we're starting to get some, you know, making headway. We work a lot with the keto community. We work a lot with Dr. D'Agostino, and, you know, he, he endorses us and works with us. Uh, he says it's one of his most keto-friendly foods that he uses when he's traveling. We work with this, the health, the um, athletic community. I don't know if you know Ben Greenfield. He's a former Ironman, and he just says, you know, you can't beat the nutrient density of, of algae, and he, and he and, and, uh, likes our product particularly. Uh, algae is also endorsed by other very large organizations. As I mentioned, NASA, um, the United Nations. Uh, we, we had so many Olympic athletes um, using our product, and four of them got medals, and they publicly thanked us for helping them get there. Uh, we have all sorts of uh, endorsements from doctors. We do third-party lab tests here in the U.S., um, so, and we share those lab tests with the docs so that you can be sure that the quality of the product is what we say it is and there are no chemicals. Um, but algae is also sustainable and protects the earth. Um, it protects the oceans because you get your omega-3 from something that's sustainable and you, the poor fish don't have to be devastated. It releases oxygen to the earth um, and captures carbon dioxide. 80% of air, the oxygen on earth, it comes from algae. Um, you get much more protein per acre um, from, so it saves your land and it also um, uses a tenth of the water from regular crops. So I don't know how many practitioners are in the room, but you know, your clients are coming to you for more vitality, better health, detox, that's what algae does. They also come to you for, whoops, 
um, something that's proven, they want evidence-based, they want something that's convenient, well, guess what? That's what algae is. It's been used for 50 years. As I mentioned, there's 100,000 studies. We'll document a few of them. I can personally give you access to about 2,000 of them. And you can't get any more convenient than opening your mouth and throwing something down and you're done. You can either swallow them or chew them. And as I mentioned, it's, it's all evidence-based. It gives you improved focus, improved energy. Um, everything from your skin and hair health will improve um, from algae. It doesn't get any easier. You don't have to cook this stuff, you don't have to clean this stuff, there's no processing, this is just a crop that's dried, that's it. So what are some of the healing attributes of algae? Well, it feeds your body, as I mentioned, there's zero sugar, one ingredient, 40 nutrients, 50 years of use, it's 100% plant-based, and thousands of research studies. It feeds your brain. How does your feed your brain? The K2 prevents Alzheimer's. The B vitamins improve your brain methylation. You've got 18 of the 20 aminos. There's, it's the highest concentration of tryptophan in the world, five times more than turkey, which improves your serotonin and your melatonin. The omega-3 reduces brain inflammation. There's flavonoids that reduce your neuro neurotoxins and all those fabulous antioxidants boost neurogenesis. It also feeds your skin. The K2, it pulls the K2 out of your skin, which causes wrinkles. Um, you get, because of the high protein, it boosts your keratin, it boosts your, uh, in your hair, the collagen in your skin. Again, the K2 reduces the aging, uh, also from the omega-3, and all of that um, K2 helps move the calcium into your bones and your teeth so you don't suffer from osteoporosis or uh, more uh, teeth damage. It helps with your, your workouts. All that high protein rebuilds your muscles. The B vitamins improve your energy. The iron it has the highest concentration of iron in the world. It increases your oxygen uptake. You know that iron is what carries oxygen in your blood. Um, we, it's, uh, the spirulina is a natural vasodilator. It's loaded with, it stimulates nitric oxide, which opens up your blood vessels so all that oxygen and nutrients can get to your brain and your body um, a lot faster um, and stimulates ATP production. It also uh, helps uh, with your sport recovery. Lactic, it removes lactic acid, this is chlorella now, um, because it detects it as a, as a um, toxin. It helps reduce bone fractures because of the K2. The K2 is being pulled out of places where it shouldn't be and into your bones. Uh, it reduces your downtime because it helps build your immune system. Those endurance athletes push themselves and they usually, it takes them often weeks to recover. Well, this helps shorten that period because your body's got all the nutrients that it needs to uh, recover from uh, uh, um, a hard athletic activity. And, this, and again, this uh, chlorella growth factor speeds up your recovery if you've had an injury or any kind of surgery from, uh, from any of your activities. In general, algae just protects your health. The chlorophyll is a very, very important piece, and it boosts your, your, um, your health in ways that um, you know, would take another five days to explain, and it, as a natural detox. It removes the toxins from and, and chelates them, so it's not just pulling them out, it's carrying them all the way through your body, um, so that, and you have to have enough so that you don't pull the toxins out and they, like, they, they just stick there. Um, interestingly, it will clean your blood in an hour and a half. Uh, it will clean out toxins from your cells in about uh, seven to ten days and organs can take anywhere from two to six months and it's based on the density of the cell structure as you get into your organs they're, they're, they're denser. Importantly, um, I, I make this point that there are no oxalates in algae. I was asked about this at the last talk I gave, and I did a study. We, we had our lab test for um, phytic acid, and this is why algae is not really a plant. It doesn't have any of the negative um, plant, nutrients, anti-nutrients that general plants do. So you don't have to worry about that. And the fact that it has the vitamin K2 is really remarkable. It's, I don't know anywhere else you can get it other than grass-fed beef and dairy. So the K2, which, and of course that they're both alkaline, help reduce heart disease, osteoporosis, heart disease, um, and lots of other things. So um, now we're going to get into a little bit more, more detail about some specifics. Um, I just want you to understand a little bit more about what chlorophyll does. Uh, it's a cleanser to your blood. Uh, it cleans the bowels. I don't know if anybody's uh, old enough, but there used to be a gum called chlorets and it was based on chlorophyll you know, cleaning your breath. It oxygenates your blood. Um, in fact, the next slide will show you a very important um, slide about how, in fact, I'll do it now. I'm not sure if you realize, but your hemoglobin uh, structure is identical to um, chlorophyll. Like, 
virtually identical, I should say. The only difference is in the hemoglobin, the center atom, is iron, and that's why it can carry oxygen in your blood. And in chlorophyll, it's uh, magnesium. And this has to tell you that there's something pretty special about chlorophyll if it's so similar to your blood. And in fact, during World War II, if they ran out of blood transfusions for the injured, they used to give them liquid chlorophyll and they would heal just as fast. They also used it topically on, on injuries because it kills bacteria. Um, and if you, you just can't get chlor any more chlorophyll than from algae, particularly chlorella. Um, that's why it's so important for people who are following a ketogenic diet to take algae because uh, if you're not getting, even if you ate greens, there just isn't as much chlorophyll in the plants because our soils are so depleted. They don't have minerals in them. They don't have anything. So you're eating calories, but you're not getting the nutrients. Um, so I, I feel that you know, cl cl algae is sort of the last, your last shot. And if you didn't believe me, um, here's a chart that I pulled. Uh, the other food groups come from the Linus Pauling Institute. Um, and I, then the, my measurements of chlorophyll chlorella and the chlorophyll um, come from our lab tests, which I have with me. But it shows you that the chlorella algae has a thousand times more than Chinese cabbage or endive or any of these other greens. It's, it's irrefutable. So why not make sure that you're getting the most chlorophyll for the smallest effort <laughs> that can do the most in your body? Um, the other great thing about algae and the reason I got into this is because it's very alkaline. And most people, if they're following a sad diet or anything that re you know, resembles a sad diet, are very acidic. Um, and that's very damaging. These are the kinds of foods that are either alkaline or acidic. Did you notice that all the alkaline ones are green? <laughs> um, because of the chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is very cleansing, very alkaline. Um, and you need to be sure that you're not um, getting too acidic, your blood gets too acidic, then what happens is uh, it needs to be at that 7.34, and if it gets too acidic, your body, you would die. So your body's very clever, and it goes, hmm, too acidic. Um, I'm going to pull some of my minerals that I have stored in my bones or my organs to neutralize that acidity, and that put, weakens your immune system. That happens over and over and over again, or um, it will lead to osteoporosis because your, your bones are actually um, kept healthy because of the minerals and the protein. But if you keep eating acidic food, and if you're, and your acidity in your blood can be caused also by emotions. Um, so it's very important that you keep that, that balance. And if you aren't, algae is the, probably the fastest, easiest way for you to get back to a neutral pH. Uh, too much acidity in your blood um, causes, it strains the body, strains your immune system, stops the communication at the cellular level, and that leads to uh, rogue cells, and that leads to, um, to disease. And even Otto um, Warburg, who was the original you know, researcher on this area, uh, he won a Nobel Prize for some discoveries in cancer. You know, his quote, no disease, including cancer, can exist in an alkaline environment. So keeping your blood and your cellular structure alkaline so it can be rich with oxygen so that the communications between the cells can occur um, is very, very critical. But right now in our society, it's, it's, um, it's not happening. Okay, I'm going to get on to my favorite topic, uh, K2, uh, and I really encourage, if you aren't familiar with K2, I really encourage you to buy this book by Dr. Kate Room Blue. Uh, I got this on Amazon, um, and it explains everything. Do, do, do most people understand what K2 does? does it, you, you, yes, you do? Yes, yes. Um, and I'll well, quickly I'll summarize. Basically, K2 um, will uh, pull out the... Um, uh, well, it does two things. It pulls out calcium out of places where it shouldn't be, like your soft tissues, like your blood vessels. It stimulates two proteins. Um, one is called uh, matrix GLA protein, MGP, which sweeps the calcium out of soft tissues and puts it into bones. And it also activates another protein called osteocalcin. Sorry, you have to remember them. Uh, which is, um, allows your bones to attract the calcium. Uh, and it's so critical that we get K2 back into our diets because there's so much calcification of blood vessels um, that it's, it's causing a lot of heart disease. And why is there such a shortage? Well, back in the 60s, the farmers realized that they moved the cattle off the pastures where they were eating greens and into 
far, you know, in, 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 inside farms and fed them corn, they would fatten faster and they could get more money. Well, that was fine. Well, actually, it wasn't fine because, you know, they treated the animals terribly. But it pulled K2 out of our diets because the animals have a bacteria which allow them to convert K1 to K2. But it's only if they're eating K1. Where is K1 found? In things that are green. So when you take them off the pastures, there's no more green, no more K2, and we're not getting K2. So that's what's led to a lot of this uh, heart disease is the calcification of blood vessels, valves, um, and when they break, a little piece of calcium breaks off, that can be a, um, a stroke. So it's really hard to find natural K2. Um, there are supplements, but they're synthetic and they don't behave like the, the, the regular K2, which is an M4, but it's found in the algae. And I can, I, I can show you the, the uh, tests. Here's a study just to show you how important K2 is. There was an eight-year stu study done of 16,000 women. So this is no small study. Uh, eight years. And for every um, 10 uh, MCGs of K2, heart disease was reduced by 10%. That's pretty remarkable. So uh, it just re-emphasizes, and, I, and the, the, I, I have the one chart showing you how much K2 is in chlorella compared to just basically zero in milk or zero in, almost zero in beef, um, if, unless it's grass-fed. So we're eating all our foods. They're, like I said, there's, there's no K2 in them. So no wonder people are getting heart disease and osteoporosis. And osteoporosis, by the way, hits most women um, more, than, more than men. Uh, so I'll just dig down a little deeper into a few specific diseases that algae can help with. Um, so let's go back to heart disease. So here's a couple of pictures. Uh, you have a healthy heart on the left and a calcified artery on the right. And then also you can see uh, the other picture is showing a couple of valves, a healthy valve and a calcified valve. And you can see that the valves are not closing cleanly when they are calcified. In fact, they don't even close. Um, and this is what's, this right here, this is what's causing so much heart disease. It's not cholesterol. The cholesterol might get stuck in, in there, but it's getting stuck because the, 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 va the uh, arteries have been so clogged with calcium. You've got to start getting K2 in your diet. And the most, and you can only eat so much grass-fed beef. Um, and it's expensive. So if you can at least get your K2 from chlorella, it, it is in the spirulina, but chlorella has twice as much. So if you know anybody that's got heart disease, high blood pressure, you know, please get them informed about algae. Um, it all, so here's a quote in a science, scientific study, and I've got all these studies. K2 lowers vascular damage by inhibiting arterial calcification and stiffening. It does this by activating the matrix GLA protein, MGP, which inhibits the deposits of calcium on the walls. This is, these are, this is just one of many studies that are, have been done and are available in the NIH library. Um, Another one, this is again the back, the original study I mentioned about, um, they studied yeah, 16 women, 16,000 women and found out, you know, every 10 milli MCGs of natural K2, not the synthetic, the natural K2, they found that the heart disease um, was significantly reduced. That's pretty powerful data. Um, it also lowers cholesterol, and, and that re helps reduce heart disease. Here's a quote from the Journal of Medicine, also found in the NIH the library. Blue-green algae, like spirulina, lowers cholesterol, triglycerides, and inflammation to help prevent metabolic and inflammatory diseases like cardiovascular disease. I'm not making any of this up. This is all documented, uh, and the sad thing is all, this is just a tip of the iceberg. Like I mentioned, there's 100,000 studies that document the health benefits of algae. And the sad thing is, it's all still stuck in the scientific world. Um, m what I'm trying to do is take a lot of that science and make it more accessible to clinicians and to the consumers so that you can understand that you don't have to go on drugs, you don't have to take statins, you just have to change your diet. Keto, a keto diet is very powerful, but if you can add things like algae, then it's even more more powerful. So let's look at cancer. That's the, that was the second bubble of the highest number of um, diseases or deaths by disease. Spirulina helps reduce cancer. I already mentioned about the phycocyanin, which uh, here's it from the Journal of Cancer. Phycocyanin, the blue pigment in spirulina, exerts anti-cancer activity by blocking tumor cell cycles and inducing tum tumor cell apoptosis and autophagy. 
That, again, powerful stuff. You don't have to do the whole range of chemotherapy. The medical community knows, does not know any about this and they will not support this, but nutritionists and people in the holistic health are well aware of these sorts of things. And now you're aware of it. Here's another study. I just highlighted a couple of sections where um, in this spot it says spirulina supplementation reduces reduce the incidence of liver tumors from 80% to 20%. That's a pretty big change. So, and that's just from something that's a plant. That's just a plant. Nothing, no chemicals, no interactions, no drug, you know, no, there's never been any death in 50 years of use of algae. Um, and, and yet it does, it's so powerful uh, in the body. Uh, diabetes, it also helps reduce uh, glucose and diabetes too. Here's a study, again, NIH. Spirulina resulted in an appreciable lowering of blood glucose levels. And you can just do it here, um, have some, test your, your go to um, Keto Mojo and get some tests done and you'll see. Uh, this has been studied over and over and over again. There's lots of research about that. Here's another one, spirulina corrects lipids and carb metabolism. Quote I pulled out, spirulina was effective in correcting abnormal carbohydrate and lipid metabolisms caused by excess fructose in the body. Um, so it's just, this, the, the, like I said, this research, there's layers upon layers upon layers, but it's just not getting out. Um, Alzheimer's disease, there's another one that's just, you know, escalating in, in, in ways that it shouldn't, but if, uh, if you um, supplement with K2, particularly if you get the natural K2 from chlorella or from grass-fed beef, evidence is accumulating that vitamin K has important functions in the brain and a deficiency of K2 contributes to Alzheimer's disease. And there, you're going to see more studies coming out about this. So there's many, many pathways that algae um, uses to support health. Uh, it supports keto diets. It reduces heart disease, cancer, all, uh, Alzheimer's, ADHD, Crohn's. It, it's, al like it's almost limitless. Uh, and it does it all naturally. It's just a miracle blend of nutrients, the thanks to Mother Nature, that marry with the body's needs for optimal health. Uh, and it's just... It's stunning to me, and I've been eight years at this, <laughs> um, and I'm still learning about how amazing algae is. And I just want to share the, with the world that you know there is a simpler answer. It's not that complicated. That as the medical community, they give a name to every single little issue, and it's just the body just needs to be fed proper nutrients. Um, get the carbs out, get the sugar out, but getting them out isn't enough. You have to also add what the body needs. So um, that's pretty much it. I, I'm here with, my, I'm the founder and CEO of Energy Bits. I'm here with my team. We have a, a table out in the lobby area if you want to learn more. And um, I'm available for questions and we have, um, I'll make sure my gang comes through and collects your card. So if you haven't filled out your card yet, uh, make sure you've got that filled out because they're going to bring them up to me and we're going to draw one lucky person who will get dinner on me um, or us. And then um, um, if anybody has any questions about anything I've mentioned or not mentioned. <laughs> yes. Do you want to go to the mic so that people can... Well, I think they're also filming everything so it helps with the, anybody else who watches the video afterwards. Uh, so, we're taking two, the chlorella and the spirulina in two different forms, or are they combined in one bite? Uh, well, we, um, they are available individually because um, we wanted people to have more control. Maybe if you're an athlete or you're a very busy person, you might want more energy, so you can take the, uh, they come in little tablets that you can swallow or chew or add to a smoothie or a salad or a trail mix, uh, so they are separate. Um, but we do have, we have a product called Vitality Bits, which is a blend of the two algae. So if you just wanted to simplify your life, you could just take that one. I don't have any of those with me. Um, but we also recommend taking them, buying them separately because they do such different things in your body. Um, generally, you want energy in the morning and throughout the day. So maybe you have your tea or coffee um, in the morning and we would hope that you would have some algae because that will wake you up and get, get you powered for the, for the morning. Um, 
maybe at 2 o'clock you have that little slump again and you want a little pick-me-up but you don't want sugar and you don't have time to cook anything. So, you know, have another serving of the, of the spirulina, which we call energy bits. But then for the chlorella, because your body goes through a detox cycle when you're sleeping, um, I'll, I'll have your, my, my colleagues bring the cards up. Um, we encourage people to take the chlorella at night so it will facilitate um, the, the detox that's going on. Plus, uh, chlorella has the highest concentration of tryptophan. So it's, um, it's, a, uh, it's a precursor, which is a precursor to melatonin. So we've been having people telling us that they sleep better. Um, so taking it before uh, bed helps with that. And if, you know, we're all human, we'd like a couple of glasses of wine sometimes. And if you're in the habit of taking the chlorella at night, um, when you do have a little bit of wine, you're all already set up in your routine, and you can take the chlorella before you go to bed. It will pull all the wine or alcohol out of your bloodstream so you don't have a hangover the next morning. So I take them both all day long, every day. And because I just, I love snacking on the chlorella. If you like the flavor, most people do like the chlorella. They taste fantastic with um, macadamia nuts. I think because of the fat and the sea salt. It's, they're so fantastic. I'll tell you, we're actually going to launch a, a, a um, sort of a, tra a trail mix next year. And we're calling it Mac and Bits because we want to make it kind of cute so the kids will um, you know, use it. And we want people to be sure that they know that it's food. But um, they do taste fantastic with nuts, but particularly the, mac the macadamia nuts. So bottom line, you can take them any time of day. Uh, you can take them alone instead of meals, with meals. If you have them before a meal, you'll be less hungry. Um, they, don't, they, they, they play well together, <laughs> and they do such different things in your body. Yes. So what's the recommended dose if you're just trying to do a baseline? Yep. Uh, 30 tablets a day is what we recommend. Uh, and children can take them too, and we suggest the same number as their age. So if they're two, give them two. If they're three, give them three. You're always welcome to take less. Um, I hope what you're learning is that um, the best thing is always to listen to your body. We had a couple of people who were quite anemic, and they took two tablets you remember our recommended is 32. And they were saying, oh, they had so much energy, they had the best workout of their life, and they redecorated their house. And um, so I came to 30 after about three years of working with athletes. And the, until we got to 30, they weren't feeling the energy. As soon as we got to 30, 100% felt the energy. So that's where we, why we, got, we stabilized at 30. But if you get the benefits that you need, um, take, take less. So Absolutely. 30 of each? Yeah, that would, would be what I would recommend, yeah. yes. So you'd have 30 of the energy bit, the spirulina, and the 30 of the chlorella. And if you have a health condition, like I have a lot of people who have cancer or heart disease, they're doubling or tripling up on the chlorella. That's, why, again, why we like you to buy them separately, because if you have a health issue, you might want more of the chlorella. If you want more energy, you want more. And you can't take too much of this stuff. This is, this is just a, a plant. It's consider it like kale or broccoli, except it's just more concentrated. It's efficient nutrition. <laughs> yes? Yes, actually my question was about that. The, um, the die-off effect of chlorella, it's a very potent, uh, potent detoxifier. So if you're dealing with heavy metals, and uh, you may have die-off symptoms that are even worse than the classic symptoms. So how do you deal with that or what is the recommended dosage yeah. for those? Well, that's a great question. And there's a Dr. Klinghoffer, I think if I pronounced his name right, he recommends chlorella a lot for any kind of heavy metal detox. But he says, be sure you take enough because if you don't take enough, what happens is, and our, enough is the 30, for us, 30 tablets a day, but you could always take more if you're truly doing a, a metal detox. If you don't take enough, what happens is the chlorella will pull the toxins out of your cells, but they're not enough there's not enough chlorella to pull it out of your body. So you do get sicker. And, and there, you know, occasionally um, there will be um, uh, some detox effects that, and they will last as long as it takes to get the toxins out. Je rarely do we find it's longer than a week, um, but it can, be, it can be longer. It's really what you're detoxing from. Mercury poisoning is very big from the, you know, dental um, work. So, uh, and we're, we work with, um, 
uh, biological dentists. They love our product. Uh, we're the only chlorella that I'm aware of that doesn't have lead in their chlorella, and I can tell you why there's lead in most of the other companies' chlorella. So um, you're taking mercury out and putting lead in, not such a good idea. But uh, you, can't, you can't really overdose on the chlorella. Well, I guess if you had like 300 a day, you might. You might. But um, it's very efficient. It's not just a detoxer, it's a chelator. It will pull it all the way out. And by the way, if you know anybody that has Lyme disease, you have a great protocol for Lyme disease. Uh, what you use is um, uh, tinctures of, of, of um, um, uh, not, what, I'm, sorry, I'm blanking, um, stevia. So it's not the stevia that you get at Whole Foods. It's, a, it's medical grade, and I can give you the name. Um, Misty Meadows is a company that um, I'm aware of. Uh, so, and that kills, the, that kills the, um, the lime, but then you have to take the chlorella to pull the lime out. Otherwise, you get that die off, and you're sicker than when you had the lime. But this protocol has been proven to work anecdotally for everybody I've ever given it to. I, I don't have any science for it, but it does work. And I can, as I say, give you the company that has the tinctures that I'm aware of. So, yeah. Yes? I have been recently diagnosed with osteoporosis. Okay. And I did find an algae uh, calcium supplement, but it's made from red algae. Interesting. My concern about what you're talking about is the iron content because I have been postmenopausal due to surgery like 20 years ago, right. or 30 years ago even now, and I've been told not to take anything with iron in it. Does that, is this iron a safe one for me to take? Uh, yes, and the reason is algae, and I don't know anything about red algae, so I can't speak for that, but I can speak <coughs> for ours. Um, they're both adapt, what's called adaptogens. So if you don't need the nutrient, your body won't absorb it, and you do not, Please never take iron as a supplement because um, those are from or, um, inorganic um, substances and it's very easy to get into toxicity. This iron is from an organic, a plant-based source. So um, it will, you will not get to toxicity and because it's an adaptogen, you won't absorb it if you don't need it. Um, the best thing you could do is you know, get some samples while you're here. Uh, we, um, we also sell them s samples on Amazon, but we, we, otherwise you'd be buying large bags and we want to be sure that it would work for you. But um, if you have osteoporosis, K2 is your answer. K2 okay, is going I, to... I, I just recently started getting that too. And I, it is a natural supplement. Um, that I found at the natural grocers, and it very clearly says it's it's the MK7, and it, that it's well, natural. MK7 is not the natural form. That's the synthetic oh, form. Well, M4. It says that it is. So. Okay, M4, so M4 got the is wrong the, one there well, too. <laughs> it's explained in the book too. M4 is is from the um, from food. So okay, is that the is that the MK7? Book? I don't have that yet, so I'll have to get yeah. that. Yeah. So do you, it has do you have any of those? <laughs> Pardon me. Do you have any of those with you? That book. I, I, you can read it, um, you can flip through it, I have it with me here, so, okay. um, and I have some good notes, so cheat sheets. But yes, uh, you know, the irony is, and I have lots of women friends who have osteoporosis, and <laughs> they're still being told to take calcium, and it just breaks my heart. Um, not only is calcium not good for you, but your skeleton reforms every seven years, and it releases calcium on its own. So, and people are taking all this vitamin D so they can absorb their calcium, and so, yeah, you're absorbing it into the wrong places. It's going into your blood vessels, it's going into your brain. It's, that's, it, so we've got to get K2 into people, and the easiest way is to get it from the chlorella um, and the grass-fed beef, but the grass-fed beef is expensive, and you know, then you gotta cook it, so, um, pardon me? Yeah, so I, I can almost promise you it will take a while because it takes a while for your body to adjust to these things, but it, that's, that's the missing piece is the K2 for sure. Don't take any calcium. <laughs> yes. Hi. I have a 17-year-old um, adopted daughter, and when she was 13, um, a naturopath uh, detected metals in her blood which he thought was unusual, and he eventually attributed to the fact that her birth mother was taking crystal meth when she was pregnant. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Um, so my question is, what would you recommend for her? Well, 
um, well, first of all, if, it depends on what her diet is. And so, you know, the algae is so nutrient dense that if you've had a really bad diet and teenagers aren't known for eating well, you might want to start her on spirulina. Not because it will, de it will not detox the heavy metals, but it will boost her system so it's getting used to dense nutrition. And once she's been on that maybe for a week or two, then I would definitely get her on the chlorella um, because that's the only thing that's going to pull the metals out. But virtually everyone in the world can tolerate spirulina. I will let you know there's a, about 3% of the population just cannot tolerate chlorella. And you will know because you will vomit. <laughs> you will be very, very sick and it has nothing to do with detox. It's just like some people have a peanut allergy. There's just a percentage of people that can't take chlorella. And so with Chlorella, I always encourage people to either buy the sample size on Amazon for $4, because uh, I don't want to have anybody make a big investment in something that they can't keep. Although, you know, if you can't keep it, it's great. Pets love them, you know, give them away to somebody else. But that would be what I would recommend. Start her on something that I know for sure she will, she will be able to tolerate. Uh, and also, if anyone else has kids, if you have younger kids, if you turn it into a bit of a game and have them chew them because then their tongues turn green, they think it's really funny, or you make f happy faces on the plates. I have some moms who they tuck the algae tablets into raspberries. And if you make it a game, they'll love it. If you make it sound like something they have to take, they won't, they won't take it. But um, if you get them early enough, their palates won't be so sugarized and they'll be, they'll be good for it. But um, yeah, that's how I would go. I have a second question. Yes. All right, for like, someone like me who's like doing the ketogenic diet, would I start out with 30 or build my way up to taking 30? Well, we say 30 is the, you know, our recommended dose, but you're welcome to start with 15 if that's more your, we don't force this on anybody. I'm just trying to share with you what we came up with from our work and research. Um, but it, whatever makes you feel most comfortable, if you get satiated from 15, stay with 15. Um, but so we, our, we fuel five NHL teams, for example, and they have 75 to 100 of each tablet bef in, a, their, in their smoothies before a game because hockey is very high speed and very high intensity. So they want the energy and they want the chlorella to pull out the lactic acid. So uh, um, I just tell you that because you can go very high and you can go very low. So if you get the energy you need because you're you know, anemic and you only you have so much budget, you want to parcel them out into five bits at a time, literally. Cool, do that. Um, but wh whatever works best for you, don't be afraid of them. That's, I guess, what I'm trying to say. And then we'll take one more and then we, we'll have our little magic draw. <laughs> yes. So on that note, yes. it is okay to take, we, we have a lot of clientele that balk at doing anything that's like more than one. Yeah. So. It does the same benefits if you take those 30 or those 15 throughout the day instead of all at once. Well, it depends what you're using it for. If you just want, if you're taking them for health benefits, it's the same. You'll still definitely get the benefits. But if you want performance improvements, you need to take them all a lot. If you're looking for energy or focus or satisfy your hunger, you need them all at one time. But if it's for just general, we have people that just snack on them all day long, like popcorn. Except it's obviously healthier than popcorn. Yes, last, uh, last one, and then I'll, I'll yeah, get Lisa to come up. Two questions I had was, what, what is a broken cell from uh, broken cell chlorella? Yes. What does that mean? So, um, as I mentioned, chlorella has the hardest cellular wall in the plant kingdom, and so it has to be cracked at production. This is getting into the lead question, so I'll answer that too. Uh, and the FDA has mandated that the, all chlorella that's sold in America has to be broken cell chlorella. Um, you can still get it in other countries where it's not broken cell. So um, 40 years ago, the granddaddy of chlorella, a company called Sun Chlorella, they cr um, patented the technique to crack the chlorella. What they do is they tumble it with glass beads. But the trouble is the glass heats up, and so it's physically ba bashed. Uh, the glass heats up and lead from the glass leaks into the chlorella. Now they denied that there was lead leaking into the chlorella forever until about 10 years ago and the state of California tested their, their chlorella and found that it did exceed the limits of lead, which I tell my team how much is lead is okay, I, it's like none. So they told the company, well, you can either you know, stop selling or put a warning on your package that this, this substance causes birth defects and brain disorders, which is what they did. The problem is 99% of the companies who sell chlorella 
use their patented technique. So everybody is using glass to crack the chlorella, so everybody has lead in their chlorella. And when I started the company, because I started it to make a difference in the world, and I found out that that might be a possibility, because the science, the report from California hadn't come out yet, I, I said, well, if there's any possibility, I'm not going to do it. So we had to find somebody who had another way of cracking the chlorella, and they had just come up with a new technique, and, we, and that's the one we use. We pass our chlorella through a sound chamber, and it's the vibrations that crack the chlorella. It's sort of like how an opera gla singer's gla voice can crack a glass. So it's vibrations, so there's no heat, so the enzymes are still intact, so it's still a raw food, definitely no lead. And that's one of the reasons why the Mercury Poisoning Association wants to work with us, because we have the cleanest chlorella they've ever seen no lead. But that's what broken cell wall means. It, now spirulina, you don't have to go through that process because remember, spirulina doesn't have a cellular wall. It's just a bacteria. So it's just chlorella. The second part question was uh, where, where is the source coming from? Uh, well, our, our chlorella, all of our algae is grown in Taiwan, which is world renowned for having the highest quality and the highest uh, quality standards. Um, most of the algae that you see on the marketplace is from China, uh, where they grow it in very, they use the, uh, there's different strains of algae, there's different ways of drying it, they use flash heat because they have to get to market faster because it's, you know, it's low price, high volume. Um, they don't package it in a way that protects it, we use UV protected bags. So there's a lot of detail in, goes into selecting the good suppliers and, um, you know, we don't sell anything else but algae. If you go on to CVS or you go to any of these online, you know, pharmacy places, you know, they sell anywhere from 500 to 1,000 products. They can't possibly spend as much time on each product as I spend and we spend on algae because we're not interested in um, becoming a big pharmacy company. We're just, we just want to sell algae because we're, we're going deep. So I stand behind everything that we do in terms of the quality. And I have lab tests, we do third party lab tests, which I'm happy to show you that you can see the nutrients are exactly what we say they are. There's no, no chemicals, there's no pesticides. It's exactly what we tell, complete transparency. And that's the kind of company we're trying to build.